वेलकम टू योरिका आई एम गौहर रजा एंड यू आर वॉचिंग योरिका टूडे वी हैव फर्स्ट रेट साइंटिस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री विद अस डॉक्टर डी रमैया हु इज डायरेक्टर ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी a part of csir it's a large organization and within that you have 37 institutes one of the institutes is and one of the oldest institute uh, probably within csir family uh, is uh, mm, your institute which is located in northeastern part of the country but you were born and brought up in deep south what are difference between climate culture language the way people eat dress themselves walk around how did you land up as a scientist there how was it that you shifted from such a distance to northeast yeah that's a wonderful uh, question that is it's a great question because sometimes things do happen for the good you are absolutely right it was a a great challenge for me it, it is a challenge in all respects it's a positional challenge for me and geographical cultural and as you mentioned uh in all aspects including and a scientific challenge in, including the scientific challenge what what motivated you to do science the the motivation was i think my father he was very so father was strict, your role model role model that time mm. he gave me the 100% freedom whenever i wanted to go for the higher education he never stopped me and uh, but i was again at the school level there were a few teachers who really were the uh, uh, models and they were remember, motivating factors. do you remember one of the teachers yeah i can say that one uh, you know the teacher name called satyanarayana he was a wonderful mathematician mm -hmm. although some of i did not go into the mathematics in later years but he was wonderful and in fact i remember he used to walk almost like 5 kilometers to the to, to teach come to his school and teach to, to the, you teach us that was again an inspiration so therefore 3 kilometers to the school was not a difficult who motivated task. you to do chemistry Why did you get interested in chemistry? Why not physics? Physics was the in thing at that time. That's again very interesting question, and uh, but to be frank, after uh, you know after tenth standard, I was always interested in biology. I want to become a doctor because somehow I got cultivated that habit. But then those days it was. too tough to get into the admission uh, admission <laughs> into the you wanted to be probably the doctor yes. but you landed up in chemistry was it not a very big cultural shock for you yes it is indeed and uh, in fact i may tell you that after graduation i got admission into uh, llb to become a lawyer yeah that is fascinating and uh, that you took admission in llb and you took admission in science so and you gave up llb why did you give up llb so that was again uh, some of uh, when i critically analyzed myself that was a real i think a uh, step that i took forward and then said that yes no i can never be a successful lawyer <laughs> but then i think <laughs> why then did my, you think that <laughs> but my mind was always in science, science. so that, that was, was motivated call. yes and then i went and to uh, do the chemistry and again i stood second in the university and then uh, again successful in getting the university grants commission's fellowship to right. do pursue phd in the same university at warangal and but then it so happened that one of the teachers professor krishna moorthy it was so fascinating it was a wonderful teacher in organic chemistry and then he came to know that i have an opportunity to go to the iit and he was the man behind forcing me to leave the university and go on and pursue my higher studies at iit kanpur and i, I was, hope the teachers are again listening yeah. how teachers of the 
previous generation have given first rate scientists to the country who have right. shaped the country. Right. So in turn, teachers have been shaping a great country called India. That's yeah, please true. continue. Yeah, again, I was so fortunate and so lucky to get uh, to do PhD under the very eminent personality, Professor Yamvi George. He was, of course, several people told me that he was a very tough master and one has to be uh, successful there. Otherwise, you have no place. But then I took the challenge and I joined with him. I learned a lot of things. He is the one who has instilled in confidence me how to tackle the problems, how to analyze the problems, and how to dream big, and how to be systematic, punctual with respect to the deadlines. He was very meticulous. And uh, I think I'm fortunate to say that I inculcated calculated that culture and I am passing on to the generations to generations to my students. What also. made you interested in doing uh, crystallography and uh, high cutting edge chemistry of the time and also photochemistry? Because photochemistry uh, it has to do a lot with physics rather than chemistry. Exactly. So how did that shift take place? in your career? Yeah, that's uh, again, as I said, although I was interested in biology and more towards the nature, but then I had an opportunity to work with this great personality and then his expertise is in the area of photochemistry. So right. although I was a, a, by training organic synthetic chemistry, but then I learned how to design the molecules which are photochemically active. Mm -hmm. and then look at various photophysical aspects. You are absolutely right, it deals with most of the physics and other aspects, but then I could uh, you know, learn this, some of these techniques and also to understand, again basically I was working in organic photochemistry, right. how molecules interact with the light and what are the excited states involved and how these excited states can be characterized and trapped and can be utilized to synthesize biologically important molecules. This is physics exactly. that you are talking exactly. about. It's not only chemistry, it's not right. only biology. Right. That the only way uh, uh, energy, which is heat energy or in uh, other forms, get consolidated into useful forms. Exactly. This is the factory that exactly. is, exists on the earth right. uh, where uh, the non-useful energy gets converted into matter, right. which is again... Uh, an organized form of uh, energy. Now, once you get into this area, then without doing high level of physics, you can't do chemistry, you can't do biology. This realization has happened during 80s That's intensely true. and that right, has right. completely That's changed how you did science, right. including photochemistry. Uh, how did you deal with this in your institute? Yes, that is, uh, but to go on to say that, as I said, I am always have a biology as my soft corner. Mm -hmm. And although I was working on organic photochemistry, looking at the physical, photophysical aspects, but I always wanted to link this together. Right. And uh, that is where, again, I had an... Uh, wonderful opportunity to go on to visit Germany as a Humboldt Fellow. It is again one of the best fellowships that a German foundation can offer, the Humboldt Foundation can offer to any scientist of international repute. And then where I had an again an opportunity to work one of the very well-known scientists who went on to publish almost like more than 1000 papers, Professor Waldemar Adam. Again, he is one of those very tough masters <laughs> to get the you, things done. You kept on getting good teachers, but tough masters. Tough masters, exactly. But uh, and but that is how my confidence level has just gone up. And then again, I took up a very challenging aspects there, working on photophenton reagents. Right. And these are the molecules uh, upon excitations, they, they go to the excited states and then becomes generate radicals and then they cleave DNA also. So, photon, how photon fenton reagents can be utilized to cleave the DNA and how these molecules interact with the DNA and uh, what are the modifications they induce in DNA 
and how these modifications can be characterized at the molecular level. So, in fact, an organic chemist working on photophysical aspects and then went on to do the molecular biology. In fact, I started learning doing how to, how to run the gels and then separate the DNA and modify DNA and also the huge proteins. This the is a of perfect that. example exactly. of interdisciplinary exactly. research yes. where knowledge from physics, chemistry, biology and biotechnology comes together Come to, to exactly. produce something. Yeah. Uh, don't go anywhere. We are taking a break. Keep watching. Eureka. We will come back. Welcome back to Eureka. We were discussing with Dr. Ramaya as to how he got interested into doing the cutting edge research and he got experience not only from India but abroad and brought it back. Why did you come back to India? Yeah, that is a wonderful question. You were uh, doing, you were working at the best institute, you yes. had a best scholarship, exactly. your supervisor was one of the brightest scientists of his time. Yes. Why did you come back? Yeah, in fact, after I having finished my PhD at IIT Kanpur, I had an opportunity to go to United States to do my postdoctoral work. But then there was a question whether to contribute to my country or to go on to United States and settle down because that was the trend in those days. Many of my friends, contemporaries have gone there and then… The some, land of sugar and honey. Exactly. So, but then those days I was really patriotic and uh, wanted to settle down first and then go on visit and get the uh, experience in various other… But you wanted areas. to serve the country exactly. and you were very clear about very it. Very clear on that. In was fact, it I to do something with your family? Well, but yes. But you are away from your family. Exactly. And, uh, but my family also contributed to that, to take the decisions on that because they were always also wanted me to be in India, that mm. is one way or other way. But I was, but without any deep, you know, but doubt that I wanted to contribute to my country. So that you was have clear. been contributing a lot in terms of publishing uh, papers and research papers that you have published in some of the best journals uh, world over. How would you uh, sum up the kind of technologies that your institute has developed during your leadership and previously? Uh, this is uh, again a very tough question. Uh, there are, uh, uh, you are talking about the NIST. I, I the, am talking uh, about NIST. NIST True and wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, these are uh, again when you, it comes to the technologies, yes, I fully agree with that. Uh, you know, we have been, uh, I think, uh, you know, um, uh, this was the institute uh, center which was just started in 1988. I was the first one to join there and then it became, you know, I think one of the best centers for the photochemical research uh, in the world and it is highly recognized and uh, five of us were uh, members of that. Your colleagues and, uh, were very supportive and it was a very exactly tightly knit team. Net, which net you team. And uh, we used to pool the, all the resources and then explore our objectives independently and then uh, we could contribute and we could establish an, in our own areas and recognized by various uh, you know, uh, uh, agencies. But at the same time you are absolutely right that uh, uh, I have a regret to regret in this context is that although we were excellent minds, but we never worked together and to have a, 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 mm. a technology which is of highly on relevant one to the project on one project. I that is I must say that. But as independently we have excelled, but then as a team, we did not really uh, work on a on a. a technology that can really have a social impact. Not one mission. Not one mission. If exactly. you had taken, all five of you had taken right. one right. mission, 
then probably you would have achieved much higher heights. Yeah. Uh, if I ask you a very simple question that NIST, that is uh, Northeastern Institute of Science and Technology, uh, uh, if I ask you a question that tell me one major impact that it has produced over a period of time, over a period of its existence on northeastern regions of our country, what would you uh, cite as example? Yeah, this is, uh, I must say that, as I said, I am in an, I was in an institute, NIST Trivandrum, that was a center for excellence for academic publications. And in that context, my recent move to this institute at the, in the, you know, northeastern region, that is Northeast Institute of Science and Technology, which is again uniquely placed and uniquely located and has been contributing significantly to the entire northeastern regions in several ways. And the activities of this institutes are focused purely uh, to the, you know, uh, have a social impact. Right. But of course, if it comes to the scientific academic impact, of, it is of low, um, uh, you know, when compared to the other institutions. But social relevant, social impact is very, very significant. But that Be was the, the objective of creating this institute in the northeastern part exactly, of the country. Exactly, exactly. That is true. And be the, you know, the citronella cultivation or lemongrass cultivation, mushroom cultivations and establishing a medium scale cement plants and also the you know, the societal programs like CA, CSIR 800 programs like and clean water. Fiber, the clean water and uh, these are the major activities in which this Northeastern Institute for Science and Technology is contributing to the, of course, uh, uh, not only that region but also we are expanding to the these activities to the other regions of the country. So that way this institute is has done a, a, a significant contribution to the uh, And these are uh, uh, smaller technologies exactly. which no one else in the world would have given us. We exactly. had to develop exactly. these technologies this is, uh, yes. and work very intensely with the local population for right. which the technology was. How is the institute dealing with this problem? The science society linkage is a very complex thing. Yes. Uh, how are scientists dealing with this problem of, of science uh, creating this link? Yeah, that is uh, uh, again a very good question and very relevant to that uh, region. And uh, so our scientists are really working hard just to bridge this gap. How we can make scientific interventions in day-to-day -day lifestyles of the population. And that way they were very successful. So we take sometimes help of the NGOs mm -hmm. working and who are quite familiarized in, area. in that areas. And uh, they become the a bridging link. In mm -hmm. fact, now we are also popularizing through again various funding agencies like Department of Science and Technology and Department of Biotechnology, and uh, popularizing some of these, you know, uh, uh, the technologies which are again I would say the cottage level technology as well as the small scale, industry mm -hmm. scale uh, technology, and taking to the the uh, remote villages in this, uh, you know, northeastern region. region. And through who, the various... Who decides areas. what problem scientists are going to work? Is it scientific community that decides in your institute or is it the pressure from the below that uh, decides what projects will you take up? Yeah, it is because as we said that, you know, uh, this is a central government organization and whatever we do, it has to have a, you know, the societal relevance, how important it is. And that is the main driving force. We always ask questions. But at the same time, we would also now uh, would like to, it is our challenge to see how we can bridge or bring the hybridization between the high impact science can be guided to have a high impact on the society. And nobody so, else will give you that kind of technology, that kind of science, that kind of knowledge, exactly. which is required to develop an area like northeast. Exactly. Part and of the this country. is a region again. I think you may be aware of that is one of the hotspots for the biodiversity. Right. You touch any plant, you have amazing chemicals are there in this. 
how do we really exploit that excites you as a scientist exactly exactly okay. and in fact this is the institute institute again which has again brought out a few products we have a processing in our institute and bringing a lot of visibility to the institute and particularly for the anti arthritic anti fungal and all the anti mosquito the mosquitoes repellents and cleaning agents and these are all you know cottage level industries this is what is it. fascinating about our country india that it's so diverse uh, you come from andhra break all the barriers and science doesn't know these barriers and bring in science which is gained from maybe germany from maybe united states of america right. from various parts of the country and then develop the area which is called northeastern part of the country when you look at your life are you sure and certain that you didn't want to do law and you are today completely satisfied that you chose uh, the path of science exactly i really enjoy i am always an optimistic and i take things positively and whatever is happening for the is for the good i enjoy that and I, I, and always i don't see the problems as problems i always problems as challenges and opportunities and i would we talk that that is the re reason even i did not hesitate in taking uh, you know uh, this position to lead this institute when i was offered far away far from the other away from part the of the country system. exactly if so, you had chosen law we would have lost a good brilliant bright scientist in the country would you like to give a message to the younger generation the younger generation the message is the following because when i started my career it used to be purely the individual driven curiosities projects and uh, but now there is a paradigm shift it is not the synthesis of a molecule is important it is the synthesis of property is important a specific property how it can be utilized and that is uh, where in fact we have been also developing several molecules with unique properties like they can be used for the photodynamic therapy therapy of cancer and where how one can engineer these molecules so uh, so as to have a desired properties and so that they can be really used for a particular so scientist of today today in the country has to be driven by the usability of the science exactly that what is society requires exactly. it has been a wonderful session with you about your career however the time doesn't permit we'll be back once again next week with as fascinating a personality keep watching eureka every week